Biblical stories have captured the hearts of billions of people around the world, Jews, Christians and Muslims alike. The common narrative is that ancient Hebrew, once spoken by the patriarchs and their descendants, is a lost language and has ceased to exist, only to be revived by the modern state of Israel. But what if that is not true? and this ancient language is yet alive. According to Pastor Mello, ancient Hebrew is still spoken and can be traced to the ancient kingdom of Congo. In this documentary, Yaya Mello provides his evidence from the Kikongo language and dictionary, explaining Hebraic Bantu roots that predate European exposure to the Bible and Western missionaries. Brothers and sisters, first of all, praise be to the Most High, Creator of heavens and earth, who has given us this opportunity to be here and to have, to have together this talk. I would like to thank my brother, uh, Stephen Graham, who has created this opportunity and also thank my dear sister uh, Marlene Sigmore of Virginia who has made the link between brother Stephen Graham and myself. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Pastor Melo Toko Josias. I am from Angola. Uh, and you know that Angola is uh, the country of the Kingdom of Congo, where the capital city of uh, the Kingdom of Congo is uh, situated. And uh, the territory of uh, the Kingdom of Congo was divided in uh, 1885 during the famous uh, Berlin Conference into two, three countries. Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, Congo Brazzaville. And you know that there's a link, a strong uh, and narrow link between Angola and the diaspora. And uh, my ancestors, Congo people from Congo, your ancestors, that's the reason why it's for me a great pleasure to have, to share with you one of the most fantastic truths about uh, uh, we as uh, the, the, the primitive or the native people of uh, the world and yourselves. We are going to talk about the Congo language. You know that uh, there's a, the, the greatest prophet of all times is Moses. In English, uh, we call him Moses. In French, we call him Moïse. In Hebrew, he is Moshe. In Arab, he is Musa. But he is the one who made it possible for the three greatest religions in the world to exist. But what most of the people ignore is that when Moses started to write what is known as being the Pentateuch, which means the five uh, first books of the Bible, he had his inspiration through a language. And this language is the Congo language. Nowadays we say Congo, but in former times we could call the Congo language as the Paleo Hebraic language because without the Congo language, the Bible, the Tanakh, or the Talmud, or the Qumran, 
the Christian Bible wouldn't exist. You take the first page of the Bible, you take it out, and there's no Bible. There's no Bible. So, the story of the creation of the world is the basis. It's the most important page in the Bible. And it's completely uh, fantastic to be able to give you the proof, all evidence, that as I've just said, Moses was inspired by the language he was talking, which is the Congo language today, to write the first lines of the Bible. You know uh, that um, uh, the, 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 the people who is known as the chosen people of uh, the Most High, today most of the people, 99% of the people look uh, towards Palestine to, uh, to, to the, when, when we refer to them and they can't imagine that, the, uh, that the, in reality Hebrew people is in the center of Africa today after having migrated from Palestine which was known as uh, uh, North Eastern Africa to the navel of the earth, as uh, we say. You know, I've been working for uh, the United Nations, for UNESCO during almost 25 years. I am a man of culture, and uh, what I'm going to tell you right now is the fruit of years, years, and years of investigation. And you will be able to check everything I'm going to tell you now. It will be very easy to check. Now, uh, the name Moses, in fact, comes from the Congo language. Uh, Maza, Maza Umasa, which means water, because you know the story of Moses. He was taken out from the Nile River uh, because of, of a decree of the Pharaoh who uh, decided that the firstborn or the, the, the male born in the Hebrew people had to be uh, murdered. So, Maza is the real name of Moses. And Moses had language, uh, and that language inspired him to write the first lines of the Bible. In Kikongo, in the Kikongo language, which in fact is the native language of all humanity, it's the language which was divided during the uh, Babel Tower into uh, thousands of uh, uh, into the thousands of language that exist today. In Kikongo, when we are counting from one to ten, in fact, we are reciting the creation, the plan of uh, the creation as it is written in the Bible. Mosi in Kikongo is one. And you know, when you consider the, the ancient languages, like the Hebrew language, the Aramaic, and other languages, when they were written down, only the consonants were written. The vowels were not uh, written. It, it, it was uh, centuries after that people, scholars, decided to vocalize, to give vowels to the consonants. So, Mosi in Congo, written down, is M-S. And the word for the creator is Nsemi, from the verb Sema. Sema in Congo means at the same time to create and to speak. And you know that in the Bible. John chapter 1 verse 1 say at the beginning was the word and the word was God. Everything was created by the word. Hebrew also repeats the same thing and many other verses in the Bible say that creation and to speak is the same thing and you find it in Kikon. Sema is to speak. Sema is to, crea to create and the creator is the same. And 
you can make an equation between these words. Mossi is MS1, uh, uh, Sema to speak is SM, Sema to create is SM, and Semi to the PL is SM also. And you know that in the Bible, the first thing to be created was the light. Let light be, and there was light. And this light of the first day of creation in Kikomo is Semo. So we have a perfect equation about to speak Sema, to create Sema. Semi, the creator, and Semo, the first thing that was created. It's no coincidence. And the second day, the second day, oh, the number, number two in Kikomo is Zole. And Zole is written with the consonants ZL. And Zulu, which is the second thing which, were, which was created, which means the heaven or the sky, is Zulu. Zulu. You know that the, the, the famous people in South Africa that, uh, who call themselves the Zulu, they say we are the sons of heaven, the sons of sky. So Zulu is a Kikongo word. ZL. ZL, Zole, true, Zulu, uh, ZL. So it's a perfect equation also. And now for the third day in Kikongo, three in Kikongo is Tatu. And it is written with the consonant T, T. And Toto, which is the earth, is T, T also, a perfect equation. But you know that starting from the third day of creation, the, there is a discrepancy which uh, uh, gets in because the third day the Most High spoke three times. Uh, here I think that the, I, I must uh, underline a very important fact is that when we speak about the Decalogue, Decalogue, uh, which means the Ten words, and it's mistranslated. Most of people, when you talk about the Decalogue, they say that Decalogue is the Ten Commandments. But Logos is not commandment. Logos is the word, and Deca is the Greek word for ten. Everything that exists was created by the Decalogue, uh, which means that the Most High spoke ten times. And you find this tenth sign in the Congo language. We have reached uh, number three, okay? And during the third day, the Most High spoke twice. The first time to create the earth, and the second time to create the vegetation. And vegetation in the Congo language is titi. So once again, look. Tatu is T T. Earth is in Toto, T T. And vegetation is T T. T T. And we have a perfect equation about uh, these three elements. No coincidence. Now we are reaching. Ah, I think that uh, this is very interesting to, to point out. You know that the word tree, tree, the tree in English has been called after number three because it was the third day that the vegetation was created and the link to discover this is the Congolese language which is the native language of humanity. Uh, about number four, number four in uh, Kikongo is Yala, Yala is number four. And Yala means to dominate. It's at the same time, number four, and the verb to lead, to dominate, to be the master, and you will discover that it's no coincidence 
if in the Bible number four is the number for leadership, number four domination. That's the reason why among the 12 tribes of uh, Israel, and I will explain uh, later on why I don't say Israel, but I say Israel, uh, among the 12 tribes of Israel, it was the fourth tribe which was chosen to uh, give to the world the Messiah, the Messiah who is the, 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 the leader, who is the king of kings. And you find this notion of domination in number four in Kikomo. And not only, not only, uh, we have also a verb which is Yalumuna, Yalumuna in Kikomo, is to extend, for example, the sun, the moon, the stars, all these were Yalumuna in Kikongo, coming from Yala. Yala, which is number four, because it was the fourth day that the Most High created the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything. So, this language, it is in the language. It's not after reading the Bible that my ancestors or our ancestors decided to name uh, four, Yala, three, Tatu, Titi, and everything. No, it was already in the language before the earth and the heaven being created. The Most High decided to put his plan in a language, knowing that since the language is immaterial, no one will come and destroy it or uh, rob it or you know, it would it would remain until the end of of times. Now number five in Kikongo is Tanu. Tanu is written now T N. And when you study the, the Kikongo or the Congo language, you will see that starting from the third day, since the third day, the Most High spoke twice. We have two logos, two logos in, on, on the third day. So starting from the first day, we have the first logos to create uh, the light, the second logos to create the heaven, the third logos to create the earth and the vegetation. We have four logos and the Kikongo match, matches all the logos. So when we come to the, 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 the number five, in Kikongo, we refer to the fifth logos of the Most High, and the fifth logos is about the fourth day, the fourth day of creation, when the Most High created the, the, the sun, the moon, and when, for the first time, the word for domination came into existence in uh, the Bible. That's the reason why we have Mtangu which matches Tanu, Tanu is five, Tanu is the sun, the sun, and Tinu is the king. So, this notion of domination, Tinu is T-N, the notion for uh, the sun, the light, is also T-N, and here I think there's something very important also, you know that many people are discussing about how long the, the earth exists. You have on one side those who are called to be, uh, those who are called the creationists and uh, on the other side the evolutionists and they can't, they can't uh, let's uh, agree on, it, uh, on, on the fact if the earth is one billion old uh, 400 million old or is 8,000 years old. All these only because they don't know the native language, because the native language brings the solution to this enigma. Uh, remember that in uh, the Congo language, the first light, the light of the first day is in Tsemo. And the Kikongo is the only language I have made, I have made investigation of this, the, the Congo language is the only language 
to make a difference between two types of light. We have Semo for the first day and we have Ntemo for the fourth day. Ntemo is written T-M and for the first day is S-M to match with Nsemi, to match with Mosi, which is number one. So, since uh, the, 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 the notion of light, of illumination in our human spirit is only uh, evident with the apparition or the existence of the sun, of the moon and the stars, you know, we can't imagine that on the first day it could have been, uh, we could have had uh, a light. So, the Kikongo uh, making uh, a link between the word Nsemi, the Creator, and Semo, the light, says that the first light, the primordial light, came directly or emanated directly from the Creator. And you know that they decided to make a difference between this first light and the light coming from the, the sun, which was created on the fourth day by saying Temo. So between the first day and the fourth day, maybe one billion of years uh, evolved past over. You, you, you never know because starting from the first day to the, 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 the first day, this is uh, uh, a time which is called seismic. It's a seismic time and the notion of time we have to, today depends on the sun, depends on the 365 years, depending on, uh, you know, uh, the rotation of the sun and uh, the sun, uh, the earth uh, uh, circulating uh, around the sun, you see? But in the Congo language you have this difference because they knew that, that the light of the first day cannot be the light of the first day. So now we go to the sixth logos, which happened on the fifth day. It's the creation of uh, the birds and the fishes. So it's the first time that the notion of flesh of flesh is introduced in the Bible. That's the reason why it was the fifth on the fifth day, okay, and five in Kikongo, as we said, is Tn Tanu, and the flesh, the flesh is Nitu. This is what in linguistics they, 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 they refer to as a metathesis, the reversal of the syllables. Instead of, uh, for example, Tanu, Tanu can become mm, Tanu Nuta, for example. Or uh, uh, in Arabic, for example, uh, they say uh, Kabir for great, which becomes Akbar to say the most, the greatest. So this is a metathesis. And uh, uh, Nitu, Nitu N T matches Tanu T N to say uh, that it was the first time on the fifth uh, day and the sixth logos that animals came into existence. And now, when we refer to the sixth logos, the sixth logos is Sambanu, Sambanu in Kikongo. And there, you know, for the first time, uh, in, in the fifth day, the Most High spoke twice. The first time God said to create uh, the, 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 the birds and the fishes, okay? And the second time was the blessing. He blessed them. For the first time in the Bible, the word for blessing appears. And this matches also uh, the, the, the Congo language because the word for uh, blessing is Nsambu and the number six is Sambanu. It's very easy, 
you will, you will see that Sambalu in Sambu is the same word. To say that it was when the Most High spoke the sixth time that the word for benediction uh, came into the holy writings or the holy scriptures. And after the sixth logos came the seventh logos. And the seventh logos, number seven in Kikongo is in Sambwadi. And Sambwadi is a word which is extraordinary, extraordinary, because we have Sambu, which means prayer and at the same time blessing. Sambu Adi. Sambwadi, why? Because the verb to pray and to bless in Kikongo, both of them comes from Samba. And you know, you just take the nasal, the M, when you, you, you write it down, it's S-A-M-B-A. -A. You just take out the nasal and you have the word Saba, which gave Sabbath day. And you know, most of the dictionary, they will tell you that Shabbat or the Sabbath day is a day of rest. You can check. But Kikongo says, goes deeper in the meaning. It says, Tsamwadi, the three final letters, A, D, I, give the word Dia. Dia gave day in English. Okay? It gave Dias in uh, uh, English. It gave dies no, in the Latin language. And, you know, when we are uh, uh, reciting the, the, the days of the week, in French, for example, every, almost every day of the week uh, ends with D. We have lundi, which is lunes dies, the day of uh, the moon. We have mardi, the day of uh, uh, Mar Mars, we have Mercredi, Jeudi, Vendredi, the DI at the end comes from Tsamwadi, you see, which means the day. And Tsamwadi means the day of prayer and the day of blessings. I invite you to go and read Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, and you see why the Congo language says Tsangwadi, day of prayer, day of blessings. And now we have a fantastic metathesis with Tsangwadi. When we write down Tsangwadi, we just shuffle the, the order of the syllable. Uh, instead of saying Tsangwadi, we say Dian Tsangbu. Dian Tsangbu in Kikongo means holy. The, 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 the holy day of the Most High. Re, uh, imagine, imagine that we are talking about a primitive language, a primitive African language. Our ancestors officially, formally, they didn't know anything about the Bible before the arrival of the Europeans. But how come centuries and centuries, millennia before being in contact with the Bible, these truths that most theologians ignore are inserted in the language that the seven, number seven, is the holy number of the Most High, the holy number of the Creator. And you find it in Kikongo with the Ansambu, which means holy. Now we are reaching number eight. Number eight in Kikongo is Nana. And it was the eighth, during the eighth logos, when the Most High spoke for the eighth time that man was created. And the Bible says that man was created, man and woman, you know. In Kikongo, we don't, uh, we don't say man in, uh, in the sense of uh, the male, no. When we say Muntu, in Muntu, the human being, we have the male and the female, okay? And they were created the eighth day, the eighth 
during the eighth, no, not the eighth day, the sixth day, but during the eighth logos. And the eighth logos in Kikongo is Nana. And Nana at the same time means at the likeness of. At the likeness of. Number eight is Nana. In the likeness of is Nana also. And from the word number, from the number eight, we have the word Moana, which means son or daughter of. And Moana is just a contraction of Munana, which means the one who was created during the eighth logos of the Most High. How come our ancestors could know that it was during the eighth laws uttered by the Most High that man was created. It's fantastic. And when we reach number nine, number nine is voix. Voix, which means to finish, to end, but at the same time to have possession of. You know that it was during the ninth logos, you will read it when we go back to the verses, I, I, I will try to give it from memory. For the first Logos, it's verse 3 of Genesis. The second Logos, it's verse 6 in the Bible. The third Logos is verse 9, when the earth was created. When the vegetation was created with the fourth Logos, is verse uh, 11. And when the moon with the sun, the moon and the stars were created was the fifth logos is verse uh, uh, 14 and from the verse 14 we go to the verse 20 and we see the creation of the animals, the birds, the fishes and so on the seventh logos uh, which is Nsambu okay uh, the, not the sixth logos Nsambu which means blessing the creation of, of animals. We have the seventh with somebody which is uh, the holy number of the, the, the Most High. And we have the eighth logos, the creation of man. And now we have the ninth logos, which is the possession. When God blessed man and said, everything I have created is for you to be the master, to have dominion of all the animals, all that I have created. And that's the reason why the word or the verb voir in Congo means to possess. And this gave the word avoir, avoir in French, which means to possess. And the last logos is, you know, the last, uh, it was in the last uh, day, the sixth day, when the God, the Most High, said, okay, now that I have created all these things and I have given it to you, who, whom I have made to my uh, likeness, Nana, now you will know how to have, let's say, happiness in the, on, on the earth. And uh, most of the time, happiness to be at, uh, at ease, to be uh, happy is to have enough to eat. That's the reason why it ends with komi, komi, which gave the word, the Greek word cosmos, which means the end of everything. And starting from the Congo language, you see that most of the people in the world uh, count like this. They go from one to ten. And when they reach ten, it's the, 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 the end of uh, unities and we go to the dozens, we go to the, you know. Okay, so we have reached number 10. And the word Decalogue, as I said at the beginning, means the 10 words. Because the Most High created everything with 10 words. Every God said, God said, God said, means the Logos coming from the Most High and the Congo language ends with 10 but teaching the notion that the universe, the universe is symbolized 
by number 10, which you will find with the greatest scientist in the Greek civilization, the Pythagorean school, they say that the universe is typed according to number 10. But this number 10 in Kikongo derives from the 10 fingers of the hand, of, the, of both hands. The 10 fingers in the Congo language is Moko, Moko KM. Kumi, uh, Moko MK, Kumi KM, and when we read uh, Moko uh, from the right to the left, it, it gives Como, and Como is the word that gave cosmos in Greek, cosmos in Greek. And the Congo language say that the all things that were created are Kima, Kima. We have 10 Kumi, KM, Kima, all things created, Kima, KM. We have uh, Komi, Komi is the fist. You, you, you know, the fist is uh, Komi, figuring the zero, because uh, Voa means number nine, it means the end of the units and Starting from uh, number 10, we have to write with two digits. And the first digit is one with zero. And zero in uh, the Congo language is the fist. The fist is the zero. Okay? And fist is Nkomi. So we have 10, Komi, KM. We have Moko, the 10 fingers, MK. We have the fist, uh, Komi. KM, we have Kima, KM, which is uh, the, 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 the creation. So you can see that there's a perfect equation, perfect equivalences in the Congo language with which we uh, read in the Bible. Okay, now in this section, brothers and sisters, we are uh, uh, again in uh, the creation. And this time we are going to talk about Adam and Eve, who are considered as our ancestors. Although, you, as you know, after the uh, after after the Most High decided to destroy the world, we we, we must uh, uh, say that we are all descendants of Noka. Noka, and I will explain also that Noka, one of the patriarchs, is in the Congo language. Anyway, mankind in Kikongo is Muntu. Most of the, the people uh, in the diaspora, they don't know that when we're talking about Bantu people, Bantu is the plural of Muntu. And Muntu means the head, the chief, the king, Muntu, the head. Why? Because when you open the Bible, you see that when man was created, the Most High said, you are the leader. Over, imagine such fantastic animals like uh, uh, the, the elephant, uh, the lions, uh, and the tree, you know. But we are the, the head, we are the master. We have dominion uh, over them. That's the reason why in the Bantu tradition, in the Congo language, we say that we are the chief, Muntu. Okay, now uh, we will be able to, 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 to explain that Muntu, you know, in linguistic, uh, the T and the D are the same phoneme, the same, uh, the, same uh, the same sound, in fact. One is deaf and the other is sonorous, okay? But instead of saying Muntu, we could say Mundu. And when we say Mundu, for example, uh, in Kenya, the Kikuyu, they don't say Muntu, they say Mundu. We go straight to the Latin word Mundus, which means mankind. Okay? So when we write Mundu, it's very easy to see that in Mundu we have Adum. Adum is Eden. Adam, the first man. 
Now, there is a point which is very important. In the Hebrew language, they would say that Adam comes from Adama, and Adama is the dust, is uh, the, the land uh, which uh, the, the, the Most High used to create the man. And they stop there. They say Eden Adama. It's a statue, a statute, you see? But in Ikongo, we don't say that man is only clay. No, we say Mwanda. And Mwanda means the breath, you see, of the Most High, because it is written in Genesis chapter 2 that uh, after uh, forming the man from the clay, the Most High insuffered in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living creature. Without the breath, okay, we are nothing. If you 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 stop me or you stop yourself from breathing, you just uh, 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 shut sh your, your nostrils or your mouth uh, in two, three, four minutes, you're dead. So the breath of life is. Uh, gone, 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 gone out. So, in Kikongo we say Mwanda for spirit and Mwanda and Mundo, which means Adam, are the same word. Now, uh, for the male, we, we make a difference between Mundo, which means at the same time male and female. Now, to make the difference between both of them, male is Toko. Male is Toko and female is Kento or Koto, the, the, the other way around, the reverse. Toko, Koto. Toko is the male, Koto is the female. Okay? But now, the word Patriarch, Patriarch in English comes from the Congo, uh, the Congo language also. Let me explain to you that. It is written, it is written that the Most High decided that man couldn't remain alone, that he needed someone to assist him, to be his partner. And he made the man, man uh, get into a deep sleep, okay? And he took out one of his ribs to form the female. Now, this is very clear in the Congo language. Since, you know, we have uh, 24 ribs, 24. You have 12 ribs on the left, 12 ribs on uh, the right. And those ribs in the Congo language are called or named Mpati, Mpati, okay? But when it is only one rib, it becomes vati. So pati is, let's say, the male side of uh, the human being, pati, which gave the word pater, patris in Latin. And now one rib, vati, is in fact the name of the first female, vati. And it's very easy because the Bible says she will be the mother of all human beings. And when we consider the word vati, we just take the vowels. Instead of the A being the first vowel, it goes to the end and the I in the first place, it becomes vita. And vita, vitae means life in the Latin words. It gives us a lot of words like vital, like vitamins or vitamins. <laughs> but this comes from, in fact, the word or the name of our first mother, Vati. And this also is very easy to, to check. So we have Pati, which is the word, uh, the root for patriarch, patria, and we have Vati, which means the one who gave life to all the human beings. Now, you know that you can't speak 
about uh, Isole, about Israel, without mentioning the Patriots. And you know uh, that, uh, as I said, um, when we say that we all descend from Adam, Muntu, Mwanda, and Vati, uh, which is our mother, the mother of uh, all, all human beings, uh, it's true, but don't forget that humanity was destroyed during the flood. And only Noka, with, with his wife and with his three sons and their wives, survived eight people. Okay? The name is Noka. And Noka in the Congo language means the flood. The flood. Mvula inokene. Noka is the flood. And is our patriarch, the first one. And Nunu, which also comes from the eighth logos, remember the eighth logos is Nana, in the likeness of, it gave Nunu, which means the ancestors, the ancestor. And Nunu also is part of the name Noah or Noka. Now, Abraham. Abraham is very interesting because I've made all investigation about it and I found only two languages, two languages which can uh, make this fantastic, uh, fantastic, let's say, contraction. Because the meaning of Abraham is the father of nations, the father of nations. And Abba in Hebrew is father. Am is nations. And in Congo, it's very easy. It is Nsingi, Nsingi. Se, Se means father. And Nsi means nations. And Ingi means many. So the contraction of the word is a name, is a very common name in the Congo tradition. Up to now, you have many people with the name Nsingi. Singi, in fact, when we translate it into Hebrew, is Abraham. Abraham. Now, when we have a writing in the Congo language, a writing which is constituted of only 10 characters, and when we, 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 we write Singi, okay, Singi, we uh, have an extension of this name which goes to Isaac and Isaac, Isaac in the Congo language is Insaka, Insaka. And Insaka means the one who laughed. The one who laughed. And remember, remember the, 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 the story of uh, uh, the birth of Isaac. When the angel of the Most High went to talk to Abraham and Sarah and told them that they would have the, 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 promised, uh, the promised child, they laughed because Abraham was approaching 100 years old and Sarah was in her 90s and they said, how come we are so old at this age? Is it possible for us to have a child? And the angels answered, you say, ah, you are laughing, you, uh, 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 do you imagine that something is impossible to the Most High? For the reason of you having laughed, the name of the child will be, they laughed. And in the Congo language is Insaka. Insaka gave Itzak, Itzak in the Hebrew language, Isaac in most of the languages. Now, one very important part of what we are sharing with you is the origin of the name Israel. Most of the people, they have many ways of explaining Israel, but the one, the simplest one, and the most logical one is to be found in the Congo language. Let me explain to you. You know that uh, the two 
uh, the story of twins in the Bible, when you refer to twins in the Bible, everybody think about uh, Esau and Jacob. Okay? Now, in our tradition, in the Congo tradition, centuries and centuries and centuries, millennia before officially or formally receiving the Bible, in our traditions, the twins are called Zuzi and Zimba. Now, Zuzi comes from the verb Zonza, which means quarreling. Quarreling Zonza gave Zuzi. Because it is written in the Bible that the twins were fighting in, in the belly, in the womb of their mother to know who will, who would be the first. And one of the twins was very strong, very dynamic, okay? When he saw that his brother was going out first, what did he do? He seized, he held uh, his brother by his heel to prevent him from being the first to, to go out. That's the reason why the twins, when they went to light, when they came out of the womb of their mother, one was very upset, the first one, Zuzi, that's the reason why he was called Zuzi, okay? And the second one, when they saw that he was holding the, his brother's uh, heel, they named him Zimba. And Zimba, from the verb to hold Simba in the Kong language, the one who holds. And, you know, when you translate Simba from the Congo language to the Hebrew language, it gives Yaakov, Yaakov, Jacob. But now, the most fantastic is that when we consider this story only under the point of view of uh, the, the, the Hebraic language, it stops there. The one who holds, okay, Yaakov, the heel, but now, in the Congo language, not so. Because in Simba, meaning the one who holds, in his, in subsequently, we know that he had to struggle with the angel of the Most High. Now, angel in the Congo language is Mbasi. And Mbasi is exactly the metathesis of Nsimba. Nsimba, Jacob, but Jacob struggled, fought against the angel, and the angel is Mbasi. And after struggling with the angel and being able to resist the angel, the angel of the Most High said, you are a very strong man. You are the one I was looking for for able to hold the Simba, to hold the banner of the truth, of the light, until the end of times, and through you will come the Shiloh, the Messiah. That's the reason why I discovered thee, okay? And to discover, to find out in Kikongo is Solola, Solola, and the angel who was speaking in Congo said, is so really. I've found thee. And since I have discovered thee, I've chosen thee. And to choose in the Congo language is sola, which gave the word select in English. Okay? And in uh, conjugation of uh, the Congo, sola is isole, which means I have chosen thee. And it doesn't end there, because the angel added, I have discovered thee, Isolele, I have chosen thee, Isolele, and I have loved thee. And to love in the Congo language is Zola. You have Zola to select, to choose, and Zola to love. So these three words are summing up the mission of given or uh, the mission that they confided to Jacob.
Okay? He will be the one who was discovered by the Most High, chosen by the Most High, and loved by the Most High. Now there is a detail which will, I think, uh, shed a, a, a bright light on what I've just said, is that Masi, meaning the angel, but meaning also the representative of, of the one who speaks on behalf of Basi, you can find it in the English language, very easy. You just write Basi, M B A double S Y, and you add as the first letter a E, and you have embassy. What is an embassy? The embassy is, or the ambassador, is the one who speaks on behalf of the government. And Jacob is the one who speaks on behalf of the Most High. You have the word in English. It comes directly from the Congo language, Mbasi, which in Simba means Jacob. This is the mission of Jacob. And you have a lot, a lot of uh, uh, the other patches, but we have no time to, to, to go deeper into this question. Yeah. For example, we could speak of uh, uh, Moses, okay, who was taken from uh, the Nile River. But most interesting, uh, more interesting uh, even, is the story of Aharon. Aharon, who was uh, Moses' brother, and who is the first, uh, uh, the first Levite, okay. And this also, the story of Aharon is very easy to speak through the Congo language. Aharon means the last one. Why the last one? Because when the decree uh, coming from the Pharaoh said that all male would be uh, killed, uh, the, the, the Moses' parents said, ah, this, our son, Aharon, will be the last, the last one, Aharon. And Aharon in the Congo language is Suka, Suka, okay? And Suka, Simi, Isaac, it's exactly the same name, exactly the same name. And from Aharon, Suka, we have the verb for the anointed one, the anointed one who is Kusa, Kuswa. And from Kuswa, the anointed one, you just shuffle the K with Y, and you have the name of the Messiah, Yusua, Yehoshua, Jesus. Yesu. You see, all this comes from the Congo language and uh, starting from Abraham, Nsingi, Isaac, Aharon, Yehoshua, all this is written the same and it's very easy to prove. So all the story of the Patriots, all the story of the creation is to be found in the Congo language which gives you your real identity and this will be clear because this year 2020 is the year of jubilee after 2019 which was the year of the great atonement okay when the most high wiped out all of our sins now we are in 2020 the year of jubilee the reason why you see this is a very special year where everything had to slow down because the year of Jubilee, you can read Leviticus chapter 25 and you find that the year of the Jubilee, no one has to work, uh, almost all human activities have to stop and this year 2020, we are exactly living th that situation and I can announce to you, uh, sisters and brothers, that 20 21 next year will be the first year of the real emancipation of your brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Retain my word. The Most High Himself, the Messiah, is working so that your real identity be known throughout the world. And no one, no one will be able to stop this truth. No one. And I can tell you that the popes 
in Vatican, they know, and they are just uh, <laughs> they, they 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 don't know how to 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 let's say how to uh, how to manage how to manage this truth. They know about the Congo people. They know. Okay, so once more, I am very grateful for the attention, uh, for listening to what I've just said. These words are not from me, Pastor Melo. These words are from the Most High himself because he is a God or the creator of everything and he is organized, very well organized. So the prophecies which are in the Bible, for example, example Jeremiah chapter 30, 31, uh, referring to the, the, the great return to the promised land are going to uh, fulfill, are going to come true very soon. Thank you very much. Matondo in uh, uh, the Congo language and Matondo comes from the verb Tonda and Tonda gave the word Toda, Toda in the Hebrew language. Imagine that before uh, the great prophet Moses ever uh, wrote the first lines of the Bible, all these truths were already inserted in the Congo language. So the question is to know, but which language is this? Is the most highest language? That's the reason why it was hidden. It was hidden like ourselves. We were hidden. What happened to you, my sisters and brothers in the diaspora? Is as uh, uh, the, the great singer, Jamaican singer, Bob Malay son, we had to fulfill the book. We had to fulfill the book. And you know that the 400 of years prophesied in the Bible came uh, true in 2019 because the first brothers and sisters who were kidnapped from Africa, they were from the Congo Kingdom, they were from Angola and it was uh, on the 20th of August uh, 1619 that they reached uh, Virginia, Virginia and 400 years later, it was 2019, now we are in 2020, when you multiply 20 with 20, it gives 400. So we are now, now in the present time, we are fulfilling the, fulfilling the prophecies. And I would like to tell you that the meaning of Congo, Congo means the kingdom. And when we give the entire, the entire title of Congo, Congo dia Mtotela, means the kingdom of uh, the entire earth, of all the earth, which means the kingdom of the king of kings. And Congo also means Nkango, Nkango which means the people of the covenant. And this is the exact translation of Hebrew because many people, most of the people, ignore that when we are uh, referring to the Hebrew people, it means the people of the covenant from Aberit, Aberit, the covenant in the Hebrew language, which is translated in Kikongo and Nkango. When God or the Most High speaks of his people in the Congo language, he says Nkangwame. Nkango means at the same time covenant and people. So in one word, he says, my people, my covenant. So brothers and sisters, you are the covenant of the Most High. That's the reason why these truths, which were hidden up to now, are coming out. We are putting them on the table so that you know who you are. We had to become the least people. It is in the Bible. The least people, because the Messiah himself said, to be great with me, you must be the servant of all. And we, as 
Isolele, which means the chosen people, we decided to, 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 to go to the last row of uh, a civilization and we, uh, that's the reason why the European, although they came, they learned our language, they saw with their eyes, they could make the link between us and uh, the scriptures. So, brothers and sisters, I really thank you for uh, being with us. Praise be to the Most High. If you wish to know more about me, we have a site, bantufamily.net, and I have my books which are available for free on the site, bantufamily.net. Having listened to Yaya Melo's views and evidence, what is your conclusion? <laughs>